Hello everyone and welcome to It Goes Off. What a round of upsets we've just had in round six and uh, we've got a lot to get through today because it's Heritage Round, round seven coming up and we've got a very, very special and somewhat overrated guest coming into the studios. But before we get into that, Grantly Bernard, round six, who would have predicted? Anyone that got all games right, they'd, they'd have to be cheating. Probably. I think this was the week where if you remembered to put your tips in, you did the wrong thing. Because <laughs> if you forget to put your tips in in the NBL tipping competition, you just get the away team. Yep. That would have been the way to go. Forget well, the tips. It was. Uh, well, we'll get into a little bit more of that uh, a little bit later on. But as I mentioned, round seven coming up. It's heritage round. So we've reeled in one of the all-time greats. The old fella. Of the NBL competition. He is uh, getting on in years, but it's Leonard Copeland. Leonard, welcome to the program. Good to be here, Drew. Thanks. Thanks for having me. You too, Grantly. It's a great time to reminisce about some of the old days. It is. It is. It was fun back in the day. I don't watch it as much as I used to, but hey, I'm happy to be here. And uh, when you reflect back on, on your time here in Australia, you were in the NBA. You joined the Melbourne Tigers. I guess uh, the greatest decision of your life was to come to this Best beautiful country. Best decision of my life. You know, and, and that's when basketball was fun back in the early days. Alley oops, sellout crowds. I love the game. But you, you were lucky you weren't cut after your first training session. <laughs> well, considering it took me two days to get here on a plane, um, a couple of beers, and then I found out we had training. Yeah, yeah you, you're right. I was lucky. You, you were late, and he didn't get back here till late from, uh, I think you were in Italy or I Greece? I was in Italy at the time, yes. So, but when you eventually did get back, you just got together, had your first training session together, had run, and we've actually got some vision of you guys getting together for the first time. So let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at that. It's Super 8 movies, home <laughs> movies. Oh, there it is. There. Ah, okay. you want to <laughs> there it is. There's Copeland and Gaze in the uh, in transition. A little wow. bit of fancy stuff. No, well, it, it was um, <laughs> it was some exciting <laughs> times back then, Coach. Hey, one thing's for sure though. Look at the stands though, Grantley. Look, look how the Leonard Copeland used to that. pack out the stadiums oh, that throughout very the funny, Grantley. Very good. <laughs> no, but, but in all honesty, uh, Coach, it, it was a fun time and it was an emerging time for the sport. Uh, thinking back to those days with 15,000 people at uh, Flinders Park, just an exciting time for basketball. It was, and, and look, back then, when you had the, the rivalries in Melbourne, every time you played a North Melbourne or Magic team, then uh, <laughs> these guys love the Magic. Every time you played one of those teams, you just got goosebumps. And, and you know, that was the best time of, of my life. Coach, it didn't take you long to have success in the competition. Your first year, uh, the Melbourne Tigers made the grand final, come up short against the, uh, the Magic, but then in 93, a uh, historic moment, not only for yourself winning your first NBL title, but also for the Melbourne Tigers. Let's just have a look at those glory days, oh, Coach. Laho for two. Uh, and the Tigers, for the first time in history, have won the NBL title. Uh, amazing times, Coach. What are some of your memories? Uh, the best memory, I guess, is um, the hugs after, after winning the grand final. <laughs> on me. And then going up there playing in front of 12,000 screaming fans, all Perth fans. Uh, you, you can't you can't ask for anything else. Well, yeah, I was going to say that that '93 championship team uh, will be honoured by the Tigers uh, this Friday night before the game against Perth. So all quite fitting, ties in quite nicely. Absolutely, it's going to be a, a good time to see how some of the boys have uh, aged in their years out, of and uh, been in very good paddocks. Apparently, I still look the same. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> you do look good, coach. But you 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 made a real splash when you first came onto the NBL scene. Very few people have in their very first basket, in the very first seconds of their game, can have a dunk like this. Check out this, Coach. This will uh, bring back some memories for you going upstairs and bang, able to knock one down. Dave Simmons told me, he said, just run to the basket. He tapped the ball, fell right in my hands. I couldn't do anything but jump straight up. And, uh, yeah. and, and within two seconds of your first game, you had equal his career tally of dunks. <laughs> wow, that's big, that's big. That is not true. <laughs> that is not true because if we're in the heritage round, have a look at this, some of my work at the Geelong, <laughs> at the Geelong Supercats. What are you talking down. about? There's absolutely no vision ever of you dunking Well, the here it is. I, I remember the dunk. It was the best dunk I've ever seen. The only dunk I've ever seen. Look at this. Yeah. Here it is. Darren Rose there. And yeah. I just rise Because Darren above. Rose lifted him up. You couldn't see it. <laughs> rise above. Eight, eight foot rings. Yeah, that's right. And throwing it down hard. But there it is. Not, not many people uh, can see that. You reckon it was low rings, but it was just one of those uh, moments when all the stars were aligned. 
But uh, we're going to get, we'll, we'll get your well, thoughts. I, I just have one more question for Please. Coach. I just wondered, what, what was your biggest hit? Was it the Candyman or Mr. Bojangles? Uh, both. I was a superstar on both, yeah. Okay. <laughs> of course, referring to the lookalike, if we can get some vision of uh, Sammy Davis up on the screen alongside Cubs, there is a distinct similarity there, no doubt. Yeah, no I about see that. you. Hey, sound just as good as him, too. <laughs> Cubs, you're going to stick around for the entire show. Looking forward to getting your thoughts on the competition as it is today because there's a lot, a lot of talent running around, some good things happening, particularly for the Gold Coast Blaze. Grantley, who started the season very shaky, but had a very good win on Saturday night against the Perth Wildcats. Well, they needed it, didn't they? Mm. You know, if they're going to be fair income, they needed that win over the Perth Wildcats to establish mm. their credentials. You know, and I, I guess there's still an element of, are they the real deal, mm. or are they fool's gold? Yep. You know, and I think probably the next month or so is going to going to give us the answers on that. Coach, they go 10 deep on their roster. They're trying to get everyone to run. Sometimes that presents some challenges. Sometimes that hurts you. You have to go with seven strong. And then when you get a lead, you put the other guys in. Mm. Well, they're uh, back on track right now with a very good win. Another person doing some exceptional work this season is Daniel Johnson. Uh, he'd be probably my candidate for most improved this season. He's been very good and shown signs of brilliance throughout his career. Mm. Just lacking that consistency. But this year, seems like he's on track. Had another big game on the weekend, and he is, you know, really going along. This season so far, he's averaging 15.3 points and 6.2 oh, rebounds, yeah. which is up from 9.9 .9 and 4.3, and, and up on his career numbers of 8.7 and 3.8. So I think he's really making a good case for that Most Improved Player Award. And Copes, uh, not a lot to like about Adelaide so far this season, given their record, but he is a, a young fellow that you've... Had a little bit to do with and seen Excellent a bit of it. Tiger, yeah. That's correct. Well, I, I know the fans will be pissed off in Adelaide. I mean, you have to, you have to win a game in Adelaide, mm. for, and, and they're struggling right now. Mm. So, they've never been the same since you left. Oh, mm. of course. Downhill all the way. Uh, it was a round of uh, upsets, uh, none better than the Townsville Crocs over the, the Melbourne Tigers. Particularly when you look at the first half, and mm. they really looked like they were chasing their tail for most of it. But then uh, we saw the emergence of an absolute superstar in Eddie Gill. I would think. He can go. He's got skills. 20 skills. He got 27 of his 30 in the, in the second half of, of, uh, of, of the game and overtime. Mm. And he was the, the big difference. The only blemish probably was that he missed a, the free throw with 1.8 seconds to go that could have won the game. Is he so, an NBA player? He is a former NBA player in a number of different teams. He's a, a journeyman of the NBA in the true sense of the word. But uh, Copes, very, very strong. And for a man that uh, up until a second ago in the first half hadn't scored a point, hit a three-pointer on the buzzer in the, at the, um, the end of the first half and uh, just was exceptional from there out in the second half. It was brilliant. That's special. That's special. Mm. Yes, he's uh, good things there for Townsville, but also the Wollongong yeah. walks on the road to the New Zealand Breakers. Who would have thought this one? And not only did they win, they did it quite comprehensively. 18-point 18, 18 win in Auckland against wow. the Breakers. I mean, that, that's a freaky Friday, isn't it? Crocs come and beat Melbourne after being down by 13. Hawks go to New Zealand, win by 18. Mm. You know, what a, what a great job. What's going on in New Zealand? That's what we have to ask. Well, they, they, they had a very good season, <laughs> Copes, and going along. Well, I don't think they're in panic mode just yet. I would be if you let Wollongong beat you. Something, at home, something's going on. Wow, you don't have much time for the Wollongong. Not at all. I'll tell you, you, have a look into that and report back to us next week. Okay, <laughs> well, Copes, <laughs> you can tell by the great man, he doesn't hold back with his opinions, and uh, we've got a little segment that we call Who's Hot? Who's Not? And that's where it identifies some of the people that are doing some very, very good things and the not so good things. And I'd like to speak on Who's Not Hot? Well, well, can you just hold your Come on, son. Come on, dry. son. Let's get it on. Keep your powder dry, because we're going to go with the positives first, because okay. that's the way Grantley Bernard likes to do it. And Andres De Leon, the Gold Coast <laughs> Blaze. A little surprise, as we've mentioned, that they went for a point guard as their second import spot, but he showed his mm -hmm. worth. They had a bye last week, gave him a little bit more time to settle into their lineup, and he's come out and had a spectacular game against the Wildcats. Had a great game. 21 points, 7 of 13 field goals, 8 assists. That's going to get you a game. And it's a league of point guards now, isn't it, Coach? It certainly is. And back in the day, um, you know, if you're a point guard, you pass the ball. These days, point guards are shooting the ball. <laughs> so you should have been a point guard. I would, I would have never been here. <laughs> that is not true. An absolute superstar. And another one who's absolutely white hot, we mentioned him just before, is, is Eddie Gill with his performance against the Melbourne Tigers. Only had three points in the first half, 27 in the second, and a man that was so confident, just prepared to put the game in his own hands. How big is he? 
He's a point guard, but he is packing some punch. He's got some, uh, he's, some size he's about He's built him. like me. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay. Not quite, but uh, yeah. perhaps a little bit more masculine. <laughs> also, uh, a man that's very, very hot at the moment is the Hawks guard, Reese Martin. He's getting an opportunity now uh, in, in the Hawks lineup, playing more consistent minutes, and he's producing 20 points yeah. in the win over the New Zealand Breakers. It's a great job by Reese. You know, he, he got a, an opportunity with like the Boomers' third team in the off season. Mm. And, and clearly that's done a lot for his confidence to, to get that little push-up. You know, and he's picked up his scoring average from 5.8 on his career to 12.8 this season. Very good. And he's doing some really good work. Well, now we get into uh, perhaps some of the more uncomfortable <clears throat> ones and we look at who's not quite firing at all cylinders at the moment. So, Lenard, and there's got... something that's glaring on this page. I Please. Mean, imports. Now, let me speak on imports. Please. Something I know a little bit about, all right? <laughs> you guys have to shoot the ball. You come over here and shoot two, three times, and think you're going to last, there's a plane ticket waiting on you to get out of here. I'm telling you now, you have to get up 20 to 25 shots a game. I'm just being honest. I'm letting you know, guys, if you want to hang around, you want to come to Melbourne, you got to shoot the ball. Coach, I think that you're misunderstanding. The game has evolved no, a little bit. No, sir. No imports. If you don't shoot, you're the first person to go. I'm telling you now, well, I'd, I'd rather you go 0-25 <laughs> than 1-3 because they're looking at you. Shoot the ball. Well, I think that is a very simplistic way to do it. And it, clearly the game's evolved in the coaching Come structures on, and the way they do it. But one person <laughs> that uh, perhaps may need a little bit, take a little bit of your advice is <laughs> Andrew Warren from the Cairns Taipans. We saw him on Sunday uh, go down against the, the Perth Wildcats. And he was only had the three points and one of five, there would be just an element of uh, a doubt about his yeah. future. He's only had, really had one decent game mm. this Against season. The Blaze. Yeah, and I, I think, I think they've probably got to be having a real close mm. look at him. And, uh, Cubs, what about the S- Sydney Kings import, Jeray Grant? He has shown some very good positive he signs. He's straight, well out, of co- yeah, yeah. Mm. He straight well. out of college, too, so he doesn't have some of the experience of these other fellas' imports coming to Australia uh, from a very good program. But uh, on the weekend, again, he was only one of three, though, but I think in his thing, with his rebounding and the position he plays, it's a little bit different. With his size, his, um, his athleticism, he should be able to grab the ball off the rim and go back up. Mm. Three shots is not enough for him. He's very athletic. He can play play basketball. And uh, <laughs> lastly, Grantly, it seems like we're picking on the imports a little bit here. Sure, I said that. <laughs> you are only on the basis of Leonard Copeland wanted to go this direction. Right. Is uh, <laughs> the Breakers import Cedric Jackson? Uh, Two of 11 uh, in a loss. I think when we see some of the, these players that, uh, when they're in winning teams, you, it, it kind of camouflages some mm. of, perhaps some of those deficiencies. But when you have a loss, the performance of Cedric Jackson sticks out a little bit, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, look, and to be fair to, to Jackson, he's been pretty good this season. Yep. He's coming <laughs> off an injury, but he's had a cool one. At least he in got a loss. 11 shots, so i got to give him a hand. Give him a hand. <laughs> Thanks, pal. Shoot the ball, man. Cuts. <laughs> Cuts. Joey, let me, ask you a question. let me ask you a question. If I came over here and I took three shots in a game, what would have happened? No, but, but that so was... Just answer my question. It's a different time. Answer my question. That was 20 years ago. Tell me what would have happened. If you, you had been five. Thank you. But if, that was 20 years ago. If you had to come over here and had three shots a game, you know what he would have said? <laughs> You've taken too many <laughs> shots. <laughs> Thank you very much, Grammy. Thank you. Are you that kidding is me? not come true. On, guys. Well, Copes, uh, I know you're an avid watcher of this particular program, and I know you've been a little bit critical of some of the performances in the 24-second shot challenge. You cannot understand why these boys aren't consistently like uh, Bubbles Goulding was up in Gold Coast and knocking down 15 in 24 seconds. Uh, so, we gave you the microphone, and because it's Heritage and Round... And I did quite well, too. We okay. gave you the microphone. We'll be the judge of that. Okay. And you went out there and got one of the greatest, if not the greatest, <laughs> point guards ever to play in this competition, Daryl McDonald, and see how he does in the 24-second shot challenge. All right, I'm here with NBL legend, superstar, guru... Daryl McDonald, the playground king. Now, Daryl, this segment, it goes off. We're doing a 24-second shot clock to see how many free throws you can make in 24 seconds. The record's 15. How many can you make? <laughs> oh, I think I get about eight. Come on, Daryl. You're a legend, man. You, you look, you're from New York City. You know City. what, though? I was never, to be honest, I was never a great free throw shooter. You didn't shoot a lot of free throws because you passed the ball a lot. Uh, yeah, but I got, I got to the line. In my first year, I was second behind Drew in free throws. Unlike Andrew Gaze, who never passed the ball, you passed the ball a little bit I more. I did than give him. it up. I gave, I gave it up. Okay. It up. So we're going for eight, are we? I'm going to try for eight. Okay. Good luck. Yeah. 
Well, Dow, unfortunately you didn't get the record, but you did overachieve. You thought you'd get eight, you got nine. How do you feel? I'm, a, I'm, I'm good, man. I'm happy with nine. Like I said, I was never really a great free throw shooter. It's all about, it's all about repetition. That's all. Just getting it and out it, your hand. And, it, and it's been a while since you play, since you played the game. How long ago has it been? I retired, man, 2008. So that's so the last time. Well. That's actually the last time I played any structured basketball. I come down here and play Sundays with the with the with the boys with the fellas. But I said, there's no free throws. We don't. There ain't no fouls called. You don't get to the line. In other words, playground basketball. Yeah, playground. Yeah, you just come down here and play and have fun. All right. Thanks, folks. It goes off. Well, a very solid performance by the veteran uh, Daryl McDonald. But, Cobes, I've got to take exception with it. One thing I, we need to have is a bit of gratitude. I made you look good throwing all those alley-oops up there, and you're, you are sailing and pass the ball. Troy, the only reason you threw the ball up is you couldn't, you, you had nowhere else to go to with it. You threw the ball up in the air, and I just luckily grabbed it and put it in the ring. Oh, you were very. So I made you look good. Right. That was the thing, was he got an assist for that when really you should have been getting an offensive there you go. rebound. There you go. Unbelievable. There you go. Just a complete and utter disrespect for the ability to put the ball anywhere at 11 feet. But anyway, <laughs> a uh, good performance by Daryl McDonald. Uh, not quite good enough to win our this year's uh, 24 second shot challenge, but well done. Better than Patty Mills. Who's picking these guys, though? You need shooters, though. Daryl was never a shooter. So put somebody out there who can shoot the ball. Cups. Anyone you got in mind? <laughs> no, let's go. <laughs> well, we're going to give you a go. No, 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 yes, no, we no. are. Well, and we got that because it's Heritage Round. And don't forget uh, Round 7 Heritage Round where we cast everyone back and some of the more, uh, some of the heroes of the competition. <laughs> hey, we have a little section we call the Mark Zuckerberg Minute. And that is where we get... Feedback from our viewers out there. Uh, my Twitter page is Andrew Gaze 10 Grantly Bernard, and what's your... Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Are you, are you serious? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't have a Twitter page. This is good. I'm not big like you guys. <laughs> or you can hit the uh, NBL <laughs> Facebook page and uh, get a question into us, and each and every week, the best <laughs> question which we read out will win one of these coats. We'll win a official Spalding... Speaker ball. It's the best ball in the world. It is a very good ball. It smells nice too. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a beauty. And that is going to go to the person that we deem has the best question each week. And Grantly Bernard, who's uh, on the agenda today? We've got three quick questions uh, for the Mark Zuckerberg. The first one is from Nick Godsell. For the Heritage Round, do you think there should be more mention made of Dr. John Raschke and not just the players? Well, Dr. John Rasky was the founder of the competition back in 1979. He got to get got together a, a group of teams, and they formed the. At, back in the day, it was called the National Invitational League because it didn't have official sanctions, and that's where it all started. He is he is recognised with the, the John Rasky Trophy. Mm. He does get a lot of recognition, but you're, you're dead right. I think that we do need to certainly remember his contribution to the NBL. And, uh, and the yeah. league and the players and all the great things that have come from having a, a very good national competition. Because without him, we wouldn't be here. Correct. Oh, no. We would, you might not be. You might be right. Next question is for you. There you go, sir. This is right up your alley. Right. Daniel Foley wants to know, how many weeks do you think Ron Dorsey has left at the Tigers? Ooh. He can't find a shot, can't rebound. What does the future hold? Well, Ron Dorsey is a very good player. Ron Dorsey has couple of weeks. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Ron, shoot the ball. If you shoot the ball, you'll be here for eternity. Look at, I'm 20 years. Look at me. I shot the ball. Shoot the ball, son. Well, I don't know if it's quite as simple as that, Coach, because I think <laughs> when they're in a structure, the system they're running, and I think what's going to happen too, Leonard, is when Patrick Mills, if the NBA does yeah. come back, there will be more shots available, because right now he's leading the league in field goal attempts. So oh, I know. So there, there will be um, <laughs> some more opportunities there, yeah. and rightly so. Patrick Mills has been fantastic yeah. for the competition. Yeah, he has been. I think also with Ubaka passing the ball to Dorsey, because Ubaka and Dorsey play mm -hmm. with each other uh, in Cairns, him passing the ball probably up. Mm. And finally, our winning Boys. question. Our yeah. winning question for this week, the Spalding ball. This one. Have you noticed he hasn't really given it up for oh, much, has he? He's he he just the ball, he's a, I'm No one else is getting that ball. I'm surprised the winners can actually get the ball. <laughs> the winning question is from Andrea DeMonse, who says, who is the greatest NBL player 
to never have won a championship? Ooh. This is a great That's question a for Heritage Round, yes. isn't it? It is. There's, uh, gee, uh, off the top of my head, uh, uh, you've, you've caught me on the hop here, Grantly. It's, it's, uh, there's, most of the great ones have been able to uh, get there. There's been some that are here a short period of time. A very, very good one going back to, because we're in Heritage Round, was Dwayne McLean. Yes. He was a super, super player in this yep. competition that yep. never won mm. a, a championship. I was going to say Damien Keogh, yeah, maybe, mm. yeah. Uh, Grantly, any okay, well, like you two. Right. I, I did do a little. But we didn't actually know that. A little research. 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 Best yeah. player never to win a ring was Derek Rucker. Played yeah. a long, long time in the league. Yes. Was an MVP. Was a great player. Played got close. Yep. Yeah. Never and got the cigar. How many clubs did he play in? Six, seven, eight clubs? Yeah, yeah, you're right. He was. He, he, was, a, he was a great player and uh, you did right. He came very close. Got yeah. to a couple of grand finals. One with Brisbane, one with the West Sydney Razorbacks, but uh, wasn't able to get over the line. But that is a good question for our viewers as well. Get on the Twitter or, or our um, Facebook page and let us know your thoughts on who you think is the best player in the NBL competition never to win a, um, a championship ring. And who is it going to? The ball goes to Andrea DeMonse. DeMonse picks up the, uh, the basketball. Well done. Well, we've got, uh, it's called Heritage Round, and that's where we reflect back on some of our history, and it's going to be a very significant round. A lot of teams looking to bounce back. Grantly, where's all the action coming up this weekend? Starts on Thursday night. The Sydney Kings at home to the Cairns Taipans. Big game. Kings should get that one. On Friday night, it's the repeat mm -hmm. of the 1993 Championship Series, the Melbourne Tigers against the Perth Wildcats. This is... A big game Mouth for the Tigers. Worrying. Big game for the Tigers to come back after the Crocs. And th this is a toss-up. I mm. Maybe the Tigers at home. Maybe. Mm. Maybe. Saturday, it's Gold Coast against the Crocs. Gold Coast might have turned the corner. Give them the points there. On Saturday, the Tigers have got to fly across to Adelaide. They should be playing for the Leonard Copeland Shield or something in this Absolutely one. Absolutely, they should be. Why not? I'll give the, Tigers, <laughs> <What are you laughs> done? give the Tigers this one over the Sixers who are struggling. On Sunday, the Taipans were at home to the Breakers. Uh, I like the Breakers in that one. I think the Breakers have got the quality. And on Sunday, the Hawks at home to the Wildcats. I think Perth will get the, uh, the second of their road double. Well, there it is. That's all the action coming up. Get out there this week and, uh, weekend and support your team because there's a lot of great basketball on offer. Uh, Copes, you've seen just the first quarter of the season. Uh, who do you like the most this season? I like the Perth Wildcats because they play defense. Mm. Um, they got some talented players. They shoot the ball well, but they play D. No, fair enough, too. You've been an absolute sensation here today. Always, always. And uh, very humble as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think people have got a great appreciation of what I had to go through now. Well, to, what, he had to go through. what about what I have to go trying through? Trying to keep this ego this guy, in check. Unbelievable wow. stuff. Bradley, you see, you see what I'm working with? Bradley? Oh, yeah, I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. You're with me. Well, you with him. Yeah. We're, we're... Oh, right. We're going to have to have words after this program. <laughs> hey, uh, that's all we've got time for. But, uh, Leonard, we have to pay special thanks to those that support us and support this great game of ours in the NBL. And first up, we've got Ionet. Connect better. One. And Spalding. <laughs> and one. Cinebet. Virgin Australia. And Rent Smart. Doing some very good work for us, uh, chipping in and helping us through. And uh, Coach, again, a sensation. I'm not sure if we're ever going to have you back, but it was a good... Guess what? Call. I don't want to come back. No, yes. I'll be back. I'll be back. We'll no, we'd love to have you back. Thanks. Certainly lighten things up a little bit for us. Get out there and support your team. And until next week, where we come back and cover all the goings on the Ionet competition on the number one NBL podcast in the world. Were you aware of that, Grant? Uh, Copes? No, Grantly was. I, I, the problem with you. Yeah. <laughs> number one in the world. Beautiful. And it's called Gold Tigers. Here we go. Oh. It goes off. Oh. Oh.